Hello everyone, welcome to the arcade. Welcome to part four, cutting the zookeeper cabinet by CNC. I have a few quick things we need to cover before we get started. So first off is the uh, spoil board or the cut surface for the CNC machine. Um, this needs to be perfectly level before you get started. And as I mentioned before, I don't have a vacuum table. For me, it's a spoil board, which means that you actually cut into the board as you're doing your project. So in this case, I want to basically surface the board before I get started, which winds up giving me a nice flat uh, substrate to start with. All right, everyone. So this is why you need to screw your material down. So if you look over here, you press on it, you see how there's a little bit of play. This is a manufactured material, so it's not like plywood where it warps. But as we go down the line here and look, not too bad. But then when we get here to the far end, there's a little bit more play. And so what happens is, is when you're cutting your dados, a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch of flex in the material, uh, it's going to have lots of problems for you when you go and actually do your cuts. This is why we're screwing it down and make sure we have a nice clean contact surface with this is called a touch plate uh, what it basically does is allow you to calibrate the bit to the surface of the wood without actually having to make physical contact if you make contact you may wind up damaging the surface i'm now marking my home point which is basically where the tool paths we created the owner will be running from i do this in the actual wood in case i run into a problem later i can find it again we're finally now ready to start cutting something. So we're going to do our first path that we talked about earlier, which is going to be for our hole markers. So this is basically, I'll we'll go through and cut uh, spots on the board where we can safely put screws in and not have to worry about damaging the bits later. Uh, I should also note this is pretty darn loud. Uh, so you're going to want to be using ear protection when you're cutting something. Time to speed things up a little bit. So our first tool path has successfully run, which is great. And this is basically now allows us to then put our screws into our, our wood to hold it down. The reason I'm actually sitting on the wood is because my weight actually helps press the wood flat so that I have a good contact and the screw does its job with it as we come down. As I said before earlier, we're really trying to get the board to sit as flat as possible uh, for the dado cuts. In most situations, like for a Simpsons cabinet or a Ninja Turtles cabinet, it doesn't really make any difference um, because you're not doing any type of uh, tongue and groove or type cuts where the pieces have to fit into each other. In this case, because of the dados, we have to have a good fit and we have to get our depths right. Uh, as a result, the table needs to be nice and perfectly flat for us so we can go through and make the cuts. Not sure if you noticed, but I made my first mistake of the night already. This is what happens when you're worried about trying to get it filmed as well while you're cutting things. We'll touch base on it when uh, the error becomes more apparent in a little bit. So this first cut took me 48 minutes and 11 seconds to complete. People commonly ask why I run so slow or so fast or can I go faster with it. And it really just depends on how much you need to uh, save the machine, save your bits, and how accurate you want things to be. As you're running the machine faster, you may or may not wear out the bits quicker, depending on how much load you're putting on the bits. Um, you do have a possibility of breaking the bits a little bit more so. Um, but uh, I also find that my machine is not as rigid as I would always like it to be. And occasionally I do get some flex. So in this video, we're basically, well, it's sped up, but basically we're cutting at about 40 to 50 inches per minute. Um, but the machine can run all the way up to 250, 300 inches per minute. I don't like to run it at that speed, just because I find that the bit does flex a little bit. Um, the whole gantry flexes possibly a little bit as well, which causes my cuts not to be as clean, as sharp as they should be. So the cut is done. So here is my first mistake of the night. After I ran the first tool path for marking the holes and I put the screws down, I didn't bother to re-zero the tool height. 
basically what this means is that the tool height was too high because as we screwed the wood down it got closer to the spoil board and when it went through and did its CNC cut all of the cuts were too high or not deep enough into the wood. So as a result I now get to rerun the cut a second time uh, to make sure that I have the depth necessary I need. There's a shot where the cutouts removed it looks the same as our original drawings. All right, we're now ready to start our second sheet. So this is very much similar to how we did our last sheet. It's going to run our toolpath first for cutting our holes, uh, for marking where we're putting our screws again. Uh, turn the machine off, go through and put our screws in to make sure the wood is held down nice and tight. And then this time I'm going to do correctly. I'm going to uh, have my touch plate and measure my height and make sure that I have everything set correctly so I don't have to run it twice. We're now actually ready to start our cut, and this basically goes through as we did before. As I said earlier, the G-Code, uh, which is the software that we used earlier that was created for controlling the CNC machine was generated, it gets loaded in, and then it basically just executes. The CNC machine basically just counts in the X and Y axis and keeps track of where it is and makes cuts with respect to where it was position-wise. The other thing I should note for this is that uh, dust collection is a big deal. This is some of really nasty stuff and there's all sorts of horrible nasty chemicals in, these, in the dust. And as a result I have the dust collection for the machine, but I also have another uh, dust filtration system going in the garage as well, which goes through and filters all of the, uh, the entire volume of air essentially every three and a half minutes. As far as the CNC machine itself, uh, this was a kit that I purchased a couple years ago, probably seven, eight years ago now. Uh, it was originally purchased from CNC Router Parts as their Pro 48 by 96 kit, and uh, it's been modified slightly as well since then. Uh, I also have a, a water-cooled Chinese spindle on it at four and a half horsepower. If you look just below where it's cutting right now, you'll see there's a diagonal cut that was already made. Uh, that cut there is for the support that will be holding up the monitor frame. And if you look at it, it's not cut all the way to the end with it. It kind of phases out toward the bottom. And what happens is, is this gets back to my uh, reasoning why it's really important to make sure that your wood is, is down perfectly flat on the machine. So in this case, what happens is, is the wood that's towards the center is a little bit higher than the wood towards the edge. And so my seven hundredths of an inch depth and cut that I do here um, is not registering on the edge. That means I have a transition of depths of cut between the center of the board and the edge. So speeding things up here, uh, basically we're going through finishing off the cut for the speaker panel and the top. Uh, the other thing that I should note here is that I am using a compression bit as I talked about earlier. The advantage of the compression bin, as I said, is that it forces the dust down and up at the same time. So material that it's cutting at the top, towards the top of the board, it's pushing that material down. And the material towards the bottom, it's pulling that up. What that does is it really compacts the cuttings, essentially, or the dust towards the center of or towards the cut itself, uh, which really helps lock the board in. So you don't have to worry about the board sliding around as the cuts are continuing on. As we're finishing off cutting our second sheet here, we're going to be cutting out the edge corner for scrap for me so I can use this in another project. As far as the last sheet, the plywood cut, unfortunately this didn't record, um, so I'll have to show you a picture of what it looks like here. That's it for video four. Stay tuned for video five assembly.